August 24th marks a very important day in our national calendar. It's the year when three years back the Supreme Court reaffirmed the fundamental right to privacy. It linked it to all our fundamental rights, the right to life, the right to freedom of speech and expression, and this virtually means that privacy is supreme. But is it actually? And to have these conversations this year on August 24th from 6.30 to 8.00 p.m., we are holding our flagship event, which is Privacy Supreme, to mark the third year anniversary. This event will be completely online. And before I tell you more about it, let's just look past because we have held a previous edition of this event last year in association with Mozilla. Thanks once again to everyone who's here and especially our speakers. So last year we had a very innovative format which was helpful in actually promoting a lot of conversation around privacy on August 24th. And this was because we did not choose any panel discussion. We in fact went for what we call as unpanel talks in which uh, experts come and talk on specific issues for five minutes and make one central point. So we had pe people speaking on issues of surveillance, on gender, on criminal justice, on digital ID. And this year we have something better. But first, before I get to that, what were the other components of Privacy Supreme? We had special messages come in uh, from international experts and thought leaders in privacy. Um, Edward Snowden sent a tweet for this event um, because he couldn't be here. So I guess I can give a minute to read it. We had a video from chairwoman Michelle Baker. Hello, my name is Michelle Baker and I'm co-founder and executive chairwoman of Mozilla. It's so exciting to have a gathering like today's to mark an important moment in India's history. I'm and this was topped off and culminated with a conversation for half an hour between noted journalist Seema Chishchi and uh, Justice B.N. Shri Krishna who came off fresh from making recommendations on the Data Protection Committee. Now, let me tell you a bit about how we plan to make this bigger, better and more engaging for all of you this year. We have planned six unpanel talks, uh, international message and also a very engaging fireside chat. Now, while there may not actually be fire, there's a lot of smoke around privacy. There's a lot of confusion around it in the present pandemic. And there are a lot of contemporary debates which are occurring. So we have gone a bit more specific this year. Firstly, we are discussing with a noted uh, professor how uh, lessons may be drawn from international monetary frameworks towards how international flows of data are occurring and whether data is actually property and how should we look at it. The second is that a lot of political campaigns utilize voter data extensively and they use it to micro target people. Now, how does that fit in with the election framework? Does it make it free and fair or tilts it here or there? Now, uh, one thing which is being on top of our, all of our minds is that uh, a massive amount of health data is being gathered in today's day and age. How is it regulated? What should be the proper safeguards? Uh, we also have a very engaging talk uh, planned by a practitioner in the Supreme Court on how the court itself has applied the Puttaswamy judgment over the past year, whether it's advanced it or just undermined it in certain cases. And uh, two talks which I personally am looking forward to a lot, which will be there for five minutes, will make one central point as part of this unpanel are firstly relating to digital exclusion where a lot of people not only lack access towards uh, mobile devices and the internet, but they also do not know enough about the political value of privacy. So how can we deepen this value with people who may not be as privileged as us? And what can be ways to engage that level of consciousness and assertion by uh, everyday Indians? The final talk relates to how privacy presents an opportunity for marginalized communities and especially caste groups which have traditionally been excluded from benefits in Indian society. Now, um, the international message this year is actually coming from a campaigner through a conversation which will again be for five minutes on facial recognition and what can be uh, certain lessons which can be drawn from the legislative proposals for bans which are there in the United States. And so the final part of Privacy Supreme this year is also the most exciting. 
it will have a well known broadcast journalist get into a conversation with a noted public figure who's been central towards advancing privacy and data protection for every indian and this will be there for half an hour now we have not released the names of any of the unpanelists the international speaker or the participants in the fireside chat because there'll be a lot of visual language around this event also we're drawing on a large number of volunteers who will uh, hopefully make illustrations and graphics to give a visual language and grammar to privacy because sometimes it just seems so complex so remote and distant but it matters to every indian in a very very uh, 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 in a very very strong manner especially given the current pandemic and our reliance on digital devices now uh, i have one request to make in this video i know that august 24th happens to be a monday but we promise that this is our flagship event and the team is working very hard and we promise to keep it engaging for all of you. You will see a lot of conversation and buzz around social media and we invite you to join that. And please do block off this time. Remember that uh, you can always reach out to us through our forum on forum.internetfreedom.com in in case you have any thoughts comments we are always open to feedback and we look forward to hosting you this year online for privacy supreme thank you so much